Welcome to the From Burnout to Recovery show with your host, Dr. Kate. This is where your journey to burnout recovery starts. Are you feeling overwhelmed or like work has become unmanageable? Join me and my guests for open and honest conversations about burnout recovery from the comfort of the front porch. I am here to help you build your resilience and prepare you for burnout in a whole new way through a variety of perspectives. Move past the idea that burnout can only be addressed by avoidance and work to integrate recovery into your daily life. Relax, take a breath. The From Burnout to Recovery show starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the From Burnout to Recovery show with Dr. Kate on Transformation Talk Radio and a member of the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group. I am your host, Dr. Kate, and I am excited to welcome you back to the show today. As you are enjoying the show, remember to hit that subscribe button and follow me at Dr. Kate Steiner on Instagram. Today, I am really thrilled to be joined by our guest, Martha Sullivan. I'm excited to hear about her perspective on burnout, not only from her own experience, but also what employers need to keep in mind and be aware of when it comes to their employees experiencing burnout. Martha is the president of, is it Providence? Providence. Providence Prominent. Hill Consulting, thank you, Yep. LLC, founded her firm, Things You Should Clarify Beforehand, but that's all right, we're human here, with one purpose to help business owners build, buy, and sell strong, profitable companies that are attractive enough for someone to want to buy it when the owner decides to chase their next adventure. It is not a transaction. At that point, it is a transformation. Savvy business owners understand that building an attractive company doesn't happen overnight. It demands a conscientious, disciplined effort to integrate the needs of the business, the family, and the individual. It is not exit planning. It is strategic life planning. Providence Hill Consulting, where business transformations begin. Martha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Kate. I'm ex- so excited to be here and in talking with you again. It's It's been a while since we've connected, so yes. I've been looking forward to, to our conversation today. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to have you here for sure. So as always, we always ask our guests to share a little bit about yourself and your burnout experience and your journey to recovery. Certainly. I'm, I'm happy to do so. So as you mentioned, I'm the president of Providence Hill Consulting and, um, I actually started Providence Hill January 1st, um, after, a fairly significant burnout um, mm-hmm. experience. You know, in, in the work that I do, helping business owners improve the profitability of their companies or getting ready to transition its ownership, it can get kind of intense. Mm-hmm. And um, in 2019, I worked pretty close to 3,000 hours in that year. Mm-hmm. And um, it was not... Uh, the first time I've done that, I've done that previously when I was uh, working in a turnaround situation, but I didn't walk away from the turnaround feeling burnt out, mm-hmm. where this 3,000 hour experience definitely um, took its toll. And the toll came in the form of obviously a butt full of hours. Um, and fairly intense hours because I was involved in a, in a, um, a business transaction helping a client sell, and it was at all hours. Um, and uh, there were, I remember distinctly one particular Friday afternoon um, where um, actually I had finished up the day, was working on things and had gone home to dinner and my cell phone goes off on Friday night. Mm -hmm. And it is the um, grand poobah of the the company that's being sold saying, we need you to go back to the office. We're pulling the team together and we're, um, you know, we've got to save the deal. Mm -hmm. Um, And it it actually turned into an all-nighter for me. And I can't remember the last time I've done an all-nighter, let alone an all-nighter on a Friday. Um, But it was one of those situations that was, it was high stakes and you had to deliver. Mm -hmm. And what really resulted 
I think what really contributed, not resulted, what really contributed to the burnout was ultimately the lack of long-term recognition mm -hmm. and appreciation and understanding um, of what was really being asked of, of me. This particular project was on top of my day job. Um, and so it was just really a um, kind of a, a perfect storm. So by mm -hmm. the time that the project came to completion and we actually had the deal and papers were signed, the following month, literally the following month, I was walking on the earth like a zombie. Mm -hmm. um, I had no idea what was um you know, what to do with myself and how to spend my time. And, you, you know, they have just completely discombobulated sense. Um, and it, 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 there were signs and signals that this isn't going to be a long-term play. Um, mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to figure out what is going to come next. And that's eventually how I worked through that um, was... was um, coming up with Providence Hill. Mm -hmm. um, and it also, the timing was such that the deal uh, uh, was signed in January. I was in zombie land in February. Mm -hmm. Now we're in 2020. And the zombie apocalypse I, is <laughs> came along in March of 2020. Yes, hello COVID. <laughs> hello COVID. <laughs> so it was just that, that time it's like okay i'm i need to pause and mm -hmm. i need to recover and i need to um make this right for mm -hmm. me make it right for my family um and ultimately parted paths on on a very good footing um with the, my my former uh employer but nonetheless parted paths mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, what an important step. I think the piece that I'm, I think a lot of listeners and I know I definitely connected with in my own burnout experience was that, that long-term lack of appreciation and recognition yeah. and, and how often that we don't realize how important that is until we get to that, the end of that space. And we're like, gosh, I don't remember the last time that I've been thanked or appreciated for this extra work I'm doing. Well, and there were things, you know, people said the words, mm -hmm. but their actions didn't really yeah. feel like they correlated yeah. with them at all. And I, one of the things that was really surprising to me, um, cause I think it, it very often with with burnout, it's kind of like that, that um, proverbial frog in the water, mm -hmm. where you don't, re you're, you don't realize the heat is going up, 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 up until it's scalding hot, and the, the frog boils. Um, it, and I didn't recognize how deep the burnout was until I actually drove by the office mm -hmm. and I could feel a physical change mm -hmm. come over me. It's like, Oh, okay. That was, that was deeper than I thought yeah. it was. Yeah. So it's, it's very real. It's very real. And I, I came to, uh, I, I termed it PTSD in terms of corporate PTSD mm -hmm. and what that can actually, um, inflict on, on us. Yeah. What were some of the things that you started to do for yourself to, you know, to get out of the space and the feelings that you were experiencing? I mean, one was, was leaving, you know, leaving that situation, but what other things did you implement to heal once you left the situation? I really started to, um, well, do a lot of reflection. Mm -hmm. Obviously that doesn't, um, you don't just, well, you can wake up and say, I'm out. But I, I don't approach things yeah. quite that way. <laughs> um, but there was, there was that recognition and there was pausing and taking the time to say, what does make sense for mm -hmm. me? When I started working at 
with that organization, I was at a different point in my life. Where, where am I now? Where, mm -hmm. um, where are the members of my family um, at? What do we want? Um, what do I want? Mm -hmm. And then there was also the whole um, act of giving myself permission mm -hmm. to do that work and permission to uh, take care of myself. You know, and obviously it was in the pandemic, so that permission took a different form than it normally yeah. probably would have, um, but it was very real and, um, you know, it turned into exercise and um, just kind of trying to unwind and work through the issues. A lot mm -hmm. of reading. Yes. Yeah. Reading the reading. reflection. Yeah. And the reflection process is, is huge. And I, I think that it's not a part that people don't recognize how important that is to the burnout recovery process. It's actually a key piece of the method and model that I developed and use with clients. And they're surprised when they realize when I tell them how much reflection and, and self kind of you know, observance that they're going to have to have to do. So I, I appreciate that, especially in the reading and, and just learning more about that. And the journaling mm -hmm. and, and, um, sometimes I'm not a stream of consciousness kind yeah. of person, but sometimes that's where the gold, um, is, and you just yeah. need to, to prospect for it. Yeah, absolutely. Are there things that you do now in your life to kind of ward off, you know, experiences with burnout, you know, as ent entrepreneurs, oftentimes, like we can take on a lot and, and do many things when, when we're in charge and those kinds of things. So anything that you implement in your life to help keep yourself in that healthy space? There are a number of things and I, I do it for myself as well as help my clients uh, do it. Um, and, and that is, is it, uh, building on that theme of reflection, taking the time to reflect and, and build a plan. Um, you know, whether it's a plan for building the business or a plan for exiting a mm -hmm. business, it all takes um, time and thought to figure out what are my goals? What am I trying to do? What are my boundaries? Um, what do I want to do? What do I not want to do? When am I being pushed up against those boundaries and how am I, I going to, to react? Um, and what, what's interesting to me is within the whole theme of the burnout and burnout recovery is um, business owners are so, we're so vulnerable and, and yeah. you face this yourself mm -hmm. in terms of the vulnerability for burnout because mm -hmm. you're chief cook and bottle washer. Yeah. Even if you have a team that is working with you, you still have that responsibility as chief mm -hmm. cook and bottle washer. And statistics show that burnout is one of the number one reasons, actually even more than at natural retirement age, Burnout is a greater driver in lead, leaving the ownership of a company than retirement is. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so I think that that planning um, mm -hmm. exercise and asking yourself on a regular disciplined basis, am I having fun? Is this yeah. what I want to do? Is this <laughs> not what I want to do? Um, and if I've got gas in the tank and I want to keep growing my business, great, do mm -hmm. it. If you're starting to feel wobbly, then it's time to, to pause. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a vacation and giving yourself a healthy break, or maybe that's pausing and saying, I'm starting to feel wobbly. Maybe that's a signal that I need to start planning my next adventure. Yeah. And what does that look like? And mm -hmm. how do I do that in a way that um, isn't destructive to what I've invested in? Yeah my company because mm -hmm. the worst thing that can happen is you get burnt out and then you inadvertently weigh down mm -hmm. the company and yeah. that shows up that shows up in your results that shows up in your sales it shows up in your relationships um business and personal mm -hmm. so that's how that's that's how I try to ward it off is just pausing and asking myself the question and, and then planning accordingly. Yeah. I, 
I love the question. Am, am I still enjoying this? Am I like, is this still fun? And play is a really important part of my life. It's an important part of the burnout recovery process. And so yeah. I, I love that reflection question because I think that it, it's an important one for everyone to ask as part of, as part of your career, you were spending so much time in your workspace mm -hmm. that you need to enjoy it. So asking yourself, am I still enjoying this? Does this bring me joy? Do I feel playful in this space once a week, once a month, at least once a year, at least making once a sure year. you're checking in on that is a really important piece. I really like that. Well, and let's face it, you know, I long, long time ago, um, I kind of came up with the saying that grass is grass. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's green, sometimes it's brown. And is it always going to be fun to, to be in our careers or, or own a business or something like that? No, of course it's not. There are going to be days when you're like, what the heck am I doing? Yes. But hopefully those days are fewer <laughs> and there are more days like, yeah, this is really feeding me intellectually or feeding my soul or, or just it's feeding me as opposed to sucking the life yes. out of me. Yeah. Absolutely. Any tips that you would give to someone who's listening, who is an employer or a supervisor? You know, I think the biggest um, issue that I hear these days from uh, my clients and other business owners, employers, you know, everybody is scrambling for talent. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. You know, there's the discussions of the great resignation and people, yeah. um, the baby boomers are, are saying, I'm out because of the pandemic. Um, and there's a lot of pressure on the people left behind. Mm -hmm. And what I tell my clients and my, my employers is to um, try to insert that genuine, genuine fun, genuine caring mm -hmm. Um, back into the workforce, the dynamic has changed. And um, I, I truly believe that the days of just expecting people to show up like Robert, uh, robots and just do their job, um, that's a very antiquated model. You mm -hmm. have to be paying attention to what type of work are you asking this person to do? How are you compensating them? Is it providing a level of um, dignity mm -hmm. um, to the employee and it, that even you know even if it is a cleaning job or yeah. something like that are the it, are are you treating your people fairly and respectfully mm -hmm. and doing things that make them want to be there as opposed to being a jackrabbit and demanding that they do X, Y, or Z and, and just being a jerk. Yeah. Um, everybody's under pressure, but I think there's a particular onus on employers to not be a jack and, mm -hmm. and pay attention to that where yeah. you might've gotten away with it before you can't get away with it now. And yeah. if you have people leaving in droves, there's something going on that's saying that to them, I'm burnt out check. I'm gone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's so important. Yeah. You have to implement the fun, the, the true authentic caring people are looking for, for that right now. And yeah, if yeah. you do have a lot of people leaving, it's time to do some assessment and think, consider what's the employment engagement. Like, why are people not sticking around can be yeah. incredibly important. Yeah. Very you. important. Yeah. You bet. Thank yeah. you. So many great insights today. And I am really excited um, for that we've had a chance to connect here Likewise. and have you I on the show. It. So if you listeners are enjoying this, make sure to don't forget to subscribe, follow, and share this with others so that they can hear these important messages. So Martha, one last couple last question, but the bigger one is what is one piece of advice that you would offer our audience members? Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. You're the only you that's you. And um, the, the people that are in your life want you. 
in their life. Um, and they want you to be healthy and happy. So um, don't shoulder it all and take care of you um, along the way, I Absolutely. guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad of that. Yeah. That's great. Yes. Yeah. So listeners take care of you. And that's, that's what we want for you is to be in that happy, healthy space for sure. So Martha, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Where can our audience learn more about you? Sure. Um, The best place to uh, find me is uh, at the Providence Hill website. That's www.provenance, hill.com, Providence. It's a source of, of origin. Um, and check it out there. And I've got a blog and uh, things along those lines um, on the site. So love to have people check it out. And if you have any questions, you know, nudge me, send me an email uh, at info at provenancehill.com. And we'd love to connect. Awesome. And we'll make sure that that is included in the show notes for all of our audience members. Thank you, Thank you again for Thank you. being a guest today. My- right. Today, dear listeners, our recovery moment is one that you can use if you are experiencing anxiety, and this will help you regain calm, clarity, and confidence. As always, make sure that you are in a safe space if you are planning to participate in the recovery moment, specifically closing your eyes. We don't want you driving a car. So if you are, listen, take it in, but then come back and experience it fully when you have the opportunity to be safe. So to begin, become physically still wherever you are, either lying, sitting, or standing. Choose a posture where you'll be as comfortable as possible and lightly close your eyes. Bring your awareness to whatever is going on for you right now. Give the weight of your body up to gravity. Allow your weight to sink into the points of contact between your body and the floor, the chair, or bed. What sensations are there right now? If you notice any tension or resistance toward painful or unpleasant sensations, gently turn towards them, accept them as best as you can. If you begin to tense around the breath, then let go a little bit. Let go a little more with each out breath. Soften into the gravity. Notice any thoughts as they arise and pass through the mind. See if you can let them come and go without being to identify with their content. Observe them as if they were clouds in the sky. Notice any feelings and emotions as they arise. Can you let these come and go? Include everything within your awareness with a kindly perspective. Now allow your awareness to gather around the experience of the breath deep in the body. Drop your awareness inside the breath. Feel the different sensations in the front, back, and sides of your torso. Can you feel your awareness within the flow and movement of the breath? Use the breath to anchor your awareness in the present moment, breathing in the body, noticing each exhale and inhale, inhale and exhale again and again. Each time you notice your mind has wandered, gently guide your mind back to the breath deep in your body. Now gently expand your awareness to include the whole body. Feel the weight and shape of the body as it sits, stands, or lies. If you have any pain or discomfort, make sure your awareness stays open. Cultivate acceptance or acknowledgement for all your experiences. Befriend them. Use the breath 
to anchor your awareness in the present moment, breathing in the body, noticing each inhale and exhale again and again. Take one more deep breath. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you all so much for joining me. For more recovery moments, you can follow me at Dr. Kate Steiner on Instagram and sub subscribe to the From Burnout to Recovery Show YouTube channel. I am so grateful to our guest, Martha Sullivan, for joining us today. And I'm grateful for, for each of you for listening. Thank you for joining us on the From Burnout to Recovery Show with Dr. Kate on Transformation Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Kate and I wish you peace on your journey. Thank you for joining me on the front porch today. Don't forget, if you want to assess your current level of burnout, be sure to take the Feeling Crispy quiz on my website at liftwellnessconsulting.com. Be well, my friends. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Kate, on the From Burnout to Recovery show, where you are starting your journey to burnout recovery. You are invited to join me on the front porch every second and fourth Friday of the month on transformationtalkradio.com to continue growing in resilience and integrating recovery into your daily life. If you would like to learn more or find out how to work with me, visit liftwellnessconsulting.com.